Okie doke. We'll go ahead and get started. Hi guys, welcome back. So, sorry I got here a little bit late. I have a class right before this, so I didn't have enough time to set up music, so hence the awkward silence, but next time. I'll just leave in the middle of my class because this class is more important, obviously. So, anyways, um, if you follow along, going to fall 2018 announcements, CS 199 EMP, what do you want to see October 25th? That is today, at least last I checked. So you can find a link to the Google Slides over here. It should take you to something that looks like this. And we'll go ahead and get started. Any questions starting out? Nope. Cool. All right. So your weekly links are giving feedback. So just like the main lecture has their feedback form, I have my own feedback form just for EMP here. And then I also have a topic suggestion form that you can find over there. Both are anonymous. And I also welcome song suggestions. We can get like a killer playlist set up for next week. Um, Self-explanatory by any questions there? All right, so what have we done since last time? So I don't have too much material today. I'll just go over um, algorithms and the runtime and complexity and then give you um, an overview on lists, but you guys are going to go more into depth on that tomorrow. So there should be plenty of time for MP4 questions slash midterm two questions. But. So go ahead and get started with algorithms. So algorithms, we saw it before a little bit earlier, but now we're getting into more of what this actually means and understanding a little bit more now that we've gotten a couple courses under our belt. So it is a process or a set of rules to be followed um, in calculations or other problem solving operations, especially by a computer. Computers are super great at problem solving and calculations, provided that you know how to communicate with it, but now we are on week eight, so we know how to talk to computers now. So basically, what are the steps taken to solve a problem? And algorithms and data structures, they go hand in hand. So data structures are a way of storing a collection of data, and it includes the relationships with and among the data and functions to interact with the data. Questions on what an algorithm is? So I used this one before, but it's still my favorite algorithm, the Feynman problem solving algorithm. So you write down the problem, you think very hard, and then you write down the solution. Hopefully that's been how your MP4s have been going. But one of the ones that we've actually seen is a common approach to algorithms is uh, brute force. So basically, we get every possible solution. We try one possible solution. We ask ourselves, does it work? If we answer yes, yay, we're done. No, we try the next possible solution. So this is good if we just need something that works, and computers are pretty impressive right now. So a lot of the times, brute force is good enough. But brute force can be particularly bad if we don't have technology to help us out. So if we're doing something on a really old laptop or something on the micro scale, like a microprocessor, we might want to think a little bit more smartly. Questions on brute force? So algorithm runtime, this is part of algorithm analysis. So algorithm analysis is basically figuring out the time, space, and or resources needed in order to execute an algorithm. Basically, what you need to do to prove how good your algorithm is, especially if you get internships later, you'll probably have to justify why what you've done is the best way to do things. Cool, it didn't roll up this time. So 
most of the time we're going to have some sort of general analysis. So we're just thinking um, arbitrary inputs that we'll use alongside uh, specifically with big O notation. So big O notation is basically how do we measure uh, the behavior in terms of the input or how is our algorithm going to be affected as the input becomes more difficult, which typically just means larger. Questions there? All right, so big O complexity. If you guys are any sort of computer science major, you will probably see this graph close to a million times over the course of your bachelor's degree. So these are the most common types of uh, big O complexity. So you'll see O of 1, O log n, n, et cetera, et cetera, until you get to big O of n factorial, which if you write an algorithm that is big O n factorial, you should probably find a different algorithm because even getting to 10, you don't even see where this ends up. Sad face. <laughs> I mean, like, if your boss allows you to, like, go on breaks while your algorithm is running, maybe big O of n factorial will be great because you would be on break for, like, ever. That's the only scenario I can think of where that would be a good thing to have an algorithm that is n factorial. Questions there? Any other use cases? I can't think of any. Yeah? Could you give an example about the program written with a factorial? Okay, yeah. So, um, We'll go over it with uh, whenever we go over sorting. There are some insane sorting algorithms. Like my, my favorite is BOGO sort, which I believe is n factorial. So if you have an array of elements that you're trying to sort, you basically shuffle them all up, check to see if it's sorted. If it's not, shuffle them all again, and it's completely random. And that's a really horrible way to do sorting. But that's a little bit of a spoiler for when we actually talk about sorting and all that, but BOGO sort, so B-O-G-O -O sort. It's pretty hilarious. It stands for bogus sort because it's very bogus. But, and then there's like BOGO BOGO sort. And then I'm pretty sure there's a BOGO 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 sort, but we'll get into that when we go over sorting. But for now, just more about big O. So you, you're estimating here. So let's say if we had an algorithm that takes 1 half of n squared plus 5n plus 10 times. We drop everything smaller than the largest n. So largest meaning um, what we do to n. So n squared would be the largest in this case. So we drop everything else. We don't care about the 5n. We don't care about the 10. So now we have 1 half n squared. So we simplify values in front of the n, so we just go ahead and drop those as well. And then we can go ahead and put O with parentheses around it. So if an algorithm takes this long to execute, then it's big O of n, n squared. Questions there? Cool. So a couple of the more common big O's that you're going to see, we have big O of 1. That is constant time, so an example of this is an array lookup. And another example that trips people up because most of the time when we see a for loop, we immediately think, oh, big O of n. But actually, for loops that iterate through the same number of times every time that you execute a program is actually a big O of 1 because this takes constant time. This is going to take. 10 iterations every single time and just print high friend 10 times. So that is actually constant time. So just because you see a for loop there, make sure and check to see if it's going to change with how big your input is. Regardless on what sort of input, 10 is 10 is 10. Questions there? Make sense? Cool. <laughs> so, 
like I just said before, big O of n, this is linear time. So this will be something like iterating through an array using a loop. So a good way to think about it is you can actually assign n for your big O of n to whatever the array link is. So for this, we will do something for the entire length of the array. So the time that it takes the for loop to iterate through is always going to be the same as how big of an array that we have. Cool? cool. So big O of n squared. So this is quadratic time, and it starts to get kind of bad. Uh, a lot of the times, if you give your boss at a future internship a big O of n squared algorithm, we'll see how many times that does that today. Then they'll ask you to improve it, but sometimes it's OK. So if we're trying to see if something is sorted, that would be an example of n squared. So yeah, those are the big three that we've seen so far. But once we get into some of the other algorithms that you'll be using in class, you'll see stuff with log n and n log n. So we'll go over that as it comes. Good there? Good, 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 cool. All right, so moving on to arrays and why lists are going to come into play. So why arrays are good? Well, we know them already. We've, we're pretty good at creating them now. So we can write a line real quick, creating a new array, a size 10. And looking up elements takes big O of 1 or a constant time. So if we want to assign int x to something at array at index 0, we can do it in constant time. So yay. But why arrays kind of suck? We can't change the size after creation, so we need O of n to append. So in order to append an element onto an array, we have to create a new array and copy over n values plus one new one. And similar story for um, inserting. So it takes big O of n to insert. We have to, again, create a new array, copy over n values plus new one in, a new one in the designated spot. And that's just how it's going to be. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, so I think you guys are going over array lists tomorrow. So that's one um, implementation of a list. Yeah, so that, yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll give spoilers on. There are different ways to implement lists. So there is an array list that you can implement where it's an array behind the scenes. So again, um, these would take O of n time to do. But uh, there are different implementations on lists. So depending on what you're actually doing in whatever program that you're writing is where you would make the trade-offs on whether or not you will be constantly looking something up or appending a lot. So array lists would be good if you wanted a list implementation with all the functions that you could do with the list but you're going to be doing a lot of lookups, which you would want to do in constant time. Oh, right, yeah. So hash maps, I think you guys will be going over next week or something like that. I th that'll be coming up. So. Again, then you will just have even more data structures to compare against and have trade-offs. So, yeah. Oh, you're fine. So it's at the point where it says create a new array for both appending and inserting. That's O of 1, but it comes O of n when you're copying. Because like that is the group that you loop over the entire array. If you do that, that's an inserting O of n. Yes, exactly. So copying over the values, um, since we're, it would be big O of n plus 1 since uh, we're copying over the um, n values plus one more adding in the um, 
final value or depending on how you implement insert wherever you add it. So the actual copying over the values, you, there's no way on getting around that. Um, you would have to use some sort of loop or something in order to copy it over them to the correct spot. So that's where the O of N comes from. Does that make sense? Oh, Technology is great. And then arrays are already stuck kind of where they're at and they're implemented the way that they are, so that's just how it's going to be. So that's where lists come in. And I know we've only seen a little bit on lists and you guys are going to get the full on information on everything that um, is part of lists. But the quick takeaways are they're super helpful and you'll see it all the time. And then you've probably already seen them in, the re in real life. So, Bo Burden, there are two types of people in this world. One, those who can finish lists. So, stand up. I'm not as good as Bo Burnham, and I'm sorry that I test my jokes out on you every week. But <laughs> they can be varying in length, and they could do a lot of things, like add things to the front or back, so prepend or append. Or we can add and remove things from anywhere in the list, so insert or remove. And we can get in and set by the index, so get and set. So yay explanatory names. And the way that it's implemented, and this will make sense after we go over some of the different types of lists, uh, the way that's implemented, it determines the cost of each operation. So what, what its big O is for stuff like appending or inserting or removing or looking up. Oh, I'm glad it's a shorter lecture. Otherwise, that's going to be annoying. So I think, yeah, so... That's about it for the review this time. Um, are there any questions about anything that you've seen in lectures so far? Everything good with big O and algorithm complexity because, well, it's going to be a reoccurring theme as we build up more with data structures and um, once we get into some of the other algorithms. So if it's sitting well right now, you guys are probably in good shape, but if there are any questions there, please let me know. But other than that, if there's anything you guys want to review on or questions about MP, I think I'll just turn it over to you guys on what you want to do and just keep it short. So, but are there any questions? Nope. Cool. All right. How's life? Life good? October sucks. October is going to suck no matter what, but once you get through it, then like you can start seeing the finish line. <laughs> yeah, once you get through, once you get through life, and then. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't like the way the school does breaks, like just the week long Thanksgiving. Really? At my undergrad, we had like a short fall break and then like a semi-long Thanksgiving. But and I like that because it, 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 I think it's nicer because like just having a Thanksgiving break like right before you only have like a couple weeks of classes, like you just don't catch a break here. Yeah, I think it's like two weeks and then finals. Yeah, we we have a good winter break, so it's fine. 